Hi, this is Adam Harrison from Birdwood Guitars, and today I'm joined by Mark Wilmot from MRWS for episode 59 of the Cigarless Guitar Builder podcast. So with no further ado, here we go. All right, we've just pressed record, got our fingers crossed. We'll see what happens, and hopefully the computer won't die. I did get a I did get a message just before that said uh, disk uh, disk out of space or system overload. This is on my Mac. <laughs> so I don't know. So anyway, we'll look. We'll just wing in a prayer it, and uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, go from there. So how are you, mate? Well, I'm very good. I'm very good. Um. Yeah, that's about it at the moment. I'm just very good. Yeah. <laughs> We've just had a police chase around our area, so I've just done a little... Did you manage to get out. away? <laughs> oh, <laughs> definitely wasn't me. So, uh, helicopter everything, about eight cop cars. Oh, Ooh, my that God. was interesting. Well, it is Bris Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Good old Bris Vegas is a dangerous place. I'm kidding, of course. No. It's a lovely place indeed. It's a lovely place. Um, it is. Well, first, I'm, I suppose I'm going to start the podcast by apologising to everybody uh, for our weekly podcast becoming a, a third weekly podcast. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's absolutely no fault of Mark's whatsoever. Oh, hang on. Hang on. No, that's not true. Hold on. We've had two weeks, two weeks where, I think two or one and a half weeks where I've just been having a nightmare of a time with my computer. I upgraded to the new, to the new, um, uh, what is it, um, garage band. And it's just... Oh, yeah, right, because you're a Mac user. Oh, it, it's just so not intuitive, whereas the old one was just, it had lovely pictures and it was easy to use and it said, do you want to do a podcast? And you'd say... Yes, I'll do a podcast, and you press on podcast, and it was ready to go. This one, you've got to go through the back door. Like, you've got to do all of this weird oh, stuff. Know. It's just stupid. Anyway, it's so far it seems to be working, knock on wood. Um, so we're up, hopefully up and running with that. Um, we'll see how we go today anyway. Um, so that's my apology. And last week you went fishing. <laughs> I did. I did go fishing. And you caught a minnow. Um, and it wasn't successful either, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> what did you catch? A gabby or something? Yeah. A couple, couple of shrimp. A couple of shrimp. Nice. Nice. Yep. That's oh, it. You poor fella. <laughs> I know. I know. All right. Although I did do some more and I found a bull route. A what? A bull route. It's like a, a freshwater stonefish. Oh. You can't use it to play guitar, but it's still, oh. <laughs> it's still relevant to what we're talking about. <laughs> you dry it and string it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I saw in your Facebook feed you bumped into um, one of your lo- one of your customers out at a market. Yes, or? Michael Poco. Cool. That's a nice photo. You've got the... Yeah, it was cool. I'm, I took that. Yeah, I actually I actually seen him a photo of him on Facebook I think and he and he was sitting there um, uh, busking and I went I know that place but I know that place and then it clicked into me where it was this was a while back yeah but it wasn't until the other day that I actually came down the escalator and went oh there oh is. hello I know who you are oh. so it, was, it was good it was pretty good I was you know I met his wife as well they yeah. came and you know stole from the biggie belt yeah it was, <laughs> it was really funny. So it's 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 kind of nice to see see the people that you um that you deal with or that order from you and and uh, it looked like a nice guitar too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he, he had actually had a McCrusty there as well. Oh, <laughs> Nigel, yeah, Nigel's guitars are something something quite special. They're, they're rather lovely. <laughs> they're everywhere. <laughs> it's the pickups, isn't it, mate? Yeah, one of his own. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, so, what's been happening out at um, out at yeah, Castle cool. Castle MRWS? <laughs> Not a lot. Picking, packing orders. <laughs> Lots of comments. Uh, it's actually I'm still transitioning to the new website. It's, uh, had more downs than ups at the moment, which is a pain. But yeah, well, you I'm learn every day. I'm finding it easy. To and uh, so I'm actually finding it that the the, the the longer you've got it, it's 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 becoming easier to use. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, some people don't 
don't uh, have a good experience if they're using Internet Explorer, I just throw it away. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't use that. I don't know why anyone would use Internet Explorer. <laughs> no, I'm on Google. I'm uh, good on yeah, Google. Cool. <laughs> I like sharing all my information uh-huh. with the world. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been pretty good. All right. I, haven't well, had a I haven't had a chance. I, I, you, did you want to talk about that thing that you sent me to have a look at, or do you want to keep it under your hat for a bit? Oh, we can talk about that. <laughs> we can talk about. It. <laughs> no, we can talk about. It. We can talk about. It. Oh, I just didn't want to. I just yeah, didn't yeah, want sure. to like bust. You know, bust the cigar box That's guitar it. building world open with this news. Look, all of our ten listeners. Oh no, 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 Yeah. So, did you have you used it? Yet? Is the question. No, I haven't. I haven't actually set it up yet. I haven't had a chance to. I'm Hello? trying to. I'm trying to catch up on um, on orders at the moment, and I'm uh, unfortunately running uh, running a bit behind in uh, in my orders. So I'm desperately and frantically trying to finish some orders up to post them out. Uh, got one guitar, one two string bass, which was awesome. Going down to. Um, Adelaide. It's been a long time coming that one. It's a bit like fretted, had twelve inch, yep. twelve inch radius on the fretboard. Um, two strings, so EA. Oh, even radius is nice. Yeah, left handed. I stuffed up the first one because I did the neck right. I did a righty neck. I was like, no. <laughs> it was like I realised yep. at the last minute what I did. I just went nup, stuff it, start again. Um, so that one, and then when I did it, I did it with one of those, um, one of those uh, flat pickups. Uh, the the hidden ones, and it was gr- it was good, but it was because they're not wax potted. It was just, and he wants to play like death metal with it, so it was like I I plugged it. Oh, in, yeah. I, well, That's I plugged it into a bass amp, and it went just like over, like it was squealing and howling, and it's like no, no, no. So you'll be happy. I ended up taking out taking out one of the taking that out, and ended up putting in one of your mini humbuckers. And it uh, it just oh, cool. yeah, yeah, um, nice to well look they're two different pickups. I mean, I'm not going to knock Michael from MRW uh, uh, from MGB. Yeah. I'm not going to knock because I got that one from MGB, and it, it's a good little pickup, but it's a blues pickup or just a little rock and roll pickup. You know, it's not. It doesn't have that kind. Of, you can't doesn't doesn't like the high end overdrive. Oh no 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 no. Well, I had this running through a bass rig with two. You know with with four 10 inch speakers, you know, and, and like distortion and the whole, the whole trip. And, uh, it was just, yeah, it did not like it not one little bit. So we ended up having, it took an extra week to, to bring it home and finally be able to, um, uh, um, you know, set that up. And, uh, once I did, it was just, um, Yep. It was like yeah, it was just absolutely brilliant. So that's heading down on that'll head down to Adelaide on Tuesday. There's a Lightning Boy which is heading over to America. That's with one of your that's with one of the humbuckers as well because we switched now from the mortal coils to the humbuckers. Um, yeah. Nice story about that. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you a story about that. There's um there was a lady came into. It, I was testing another one that I'd been building and um, I actually had it running through a Fender Fender Twin Reverb like a big monster amp, right? Had it, But I had it going real chimey. It was beautiful. And all I was doing was just yep. testing out the intonation up the neck by playing the chords. Da, 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 all the way up the neck. And I noticed outside, I was watching this lady was um, walking down the street and she heard that she heard the guitar and she did literally did an L shape walk. Like she was walking and then turned 90 degrees straight into the shop. Like it wasn't even a wasn't even a gentle curve. It was like the, the sound hit her and she just came straight in. It was bizarre. And she looked at me. She said that just watched as I I said hello and you know I continued just testing up and down the neck and she was watching me. And she said, "Can you can you play chords on that just with one finger?" And I said, "Yeah." I said because the action on them is really low. And like, you, this particular one was really low. And she said, "Yeah." Well, she said, "I want one." I want one. Do you have any here? I said, I don't have one here. I'll have to make it for you. So she said, look, no, uh, yeah, can you make it for me? I've made one. And as she's paying, I noticed hands are shaking. 
shaking. So she had Parkinson's. And she found out that she'd been playing normal guitar forever and playing ukulele and that, but she can't do the chords anymore because she can't, she doesn't have the dexterity. So she was actually able to, yeah, to, to actually just place by place, barring a finger across it to continue playing guitar. So isn't that a wonderful That's thing? That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was lovely. So there's that heading to the States. Um, there, we've just had two Lightning Boys go over to New Zealand, both to Napier. Which is that a region? It must be a region or something, or a big or a city. Or Wait, say it again. Napier. I've got two lightning boys going to New Zealand to Napier, and I don't. No idea. I, I must say I, I don't know much about New Zealand, and, and um, but uh, that that by the way is definitely an untapped wilderness for, wilderness for cigar box guitar players because I'm trying to I'm trying to see if there's anything happening. A friend of mine's over there and he plays cigar box guitar and he just said. But there's an interest in it, but no one's really doing anything. It's it's quite interesting. So uh, for any of our New Zealand listeners, if they, if you're listening from New Zealand, get in touch with us. Uh, get in touch with the group, the um, the Cigar Boss Guitar Builder group on Facebook. Um, get in touch with us and just um, and uh, let us know what's going on over there. Be really really interested to find out because I, I thought that that would definitely be something that that, that would do really well over there. That's for sure. Um, well, I'm sure there's plenty of people over there. I, I, I make yeah. sales from time to time over there. Well, that's it. You know, that's, that's all happening. So, um, but in the shop, what's happening in my shop? Um, uh, just came up with uh, came up with uh, our effects pedals have actually been flying out the door. The handmade ones. Yeah, they've been really good. Yeah, they've been great. I just I just did one today. Did a I had an inkling to, to take one of the pedals that I'd been doing and, and do something a little different with it. And I, I just sat down, just did it all today, just in between customers. Plugged it in. It worked worked first go, and it was bloody brilliant. Just a fuzz pedal with um, volume, tone, and, and fuzz controls, uh, just in a small form. Do you have any distortions? Um, I'm, no, because I'm kind of looking more. I'm doing more overdrives and things like that at the moment. Um, but if I do a distortion, I'm going to start playing around with op amps. I'm only using transistors at the moment, so. Um, oh, yeah. So I'm having a ball with transistors, you know, just just making all sorts of crazy things with them, and and <laughs> but I think op amps are different. Like it's it's a different type of. You know, you can do more saturated distortions and things where, like metal, you know, heavy metal, you know. Oh, yes, yeah, so I understand that. Yeah, whereas the, the fuzzes are slight, the fuzzes and the overdrives are a bit more rock and roll, a bit Black Sabbath-y, whereas if you want to play metallic you kind of, you need distortion or something if, you, if, you, if you're not, you know, going directly into a rig or something like that, big amp. Anyway, um, and, yeah, I've been doing a lot more, like, apart from the orders that I've been doing, because we've got quite a few cigar box guitars in the shop, and they're selling really well. Um, we've started stocking, um, two, two companies from down here in Sydney, um, in the shop because I'm uh, mainly because I like what they're doing. And also it means that I don't have to build every single cigar box guitar that has to go up on the wall. Oh, who else? Who's, who's doing that? So I've got, um, uh, what's his name? Mark Wilkes from, um, oh, from uh, Buzzbox. Yeah. Buzzbox guitars. So, uh, we've got four of his, his guitars in the shop and a very new builder which i think i might have mentioned to you before uh, a new builder named oh god mike i've gone blank on his last name and he has a little company called divergent cbgs uh oh, and, yes and he's 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 wonderful he um he's been building um yeah he's, he's a good builder oh he's, he's he's just he's he's next level like he's just like and when i first saw saw the the items he was selling he put them on um he put them on uh, Facebook buy and sell, and he had them for like two hundred and fifty or three hundred bucks. So I, I basically phoned him and I said, "I said you're mad." <laughs> I said, "You know, I said you're a mad mate." I said, "Contact me." I said, "Please, we've got to get those guitars in the shop." Um, and we've had some real good listeners. So you know, we're, we're, his guitars we're looking at around about that um, five hundred and fifty to five ninety nine range. Um, yep. You know, it's just they're they're. So 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 beautiful. So you know they're on the website. If anyone's interested, you're supporting a good local builder um, from here in Sydney. If you're interested in in, in uh, checking them out, um, and also Mark Wilkes, of course, from um, we've got his we've got a few of his friends. Buzzbox. Yes, uh, yeah, from Buzzbox Guitars, um, and they're yeah, he's got quite a unique shape. His body, so I love. I love what he's doing. Like it, they're they're quite in, they're, they're, really they're cool. quite cool. You know, and it's it's. Yep. Um, they're comfortable to play. They sit nicely. Um, they're, you know, they're they're a good strong cigar box guitar. He uses good parts. 
you know, we only use as your parts, you know, so, so <laughs> we got picked up. <laughs> <laughs> partially. Yeah, you know, well, partially, yeah, yeah. He does use, um, he does use, I think, some of the Tone Rider pickups from, who's the company that I, that I go to every now and again, um, up in Maroochydore, um, all parts or something. Oh, yeah. All tone or all parts. Or I always type in all parts and then it comes up. So I can never remember. Oh, real tone. Real tone, that's it, yeah. But they're lovely. They're great pickups. They're, they're good and solid. Yeah. But they're for six-string guitar. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're quite large. So, yeah, yeah. But they're rather groovy. Um, so that's kind of what's happening in, in my world. But we've got a topic for today, don't we? Now, are you sure there's nothing oh. you want to talk about? Oh. <laughs> what do I know? Well, I don't know. What's, is it, what's going on? Well, I've, got, I've actually got four, I've got four builds on the bench at the moment using a little... Sorry, what are you using? The You're bouncing. So, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, hang on. Give me two seconds. I might do a jump down the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you're going springy. I'll, I'll, call, you on your, I'll call you on the um, mobile phone. Right. Okay. <laughs> and we're back, and that's better. That is much better, my goodness. <laughs> so apologies for the uh, crappy reception at the beginning of this uh, this podcast. Hey, is this, yeah, episode, is, not my fault, of course, is this episode 58 or 59? This should be episode 58. Because the last one says not 57 or something oh, like that. Was it not 57 or not 50? I, I'm losing track. I'm getting, this is, I'm losing track big time. Well, so it's still about date. <laughs> well, oh, no, don't time. do that. <laughs> That's in your new one on weekly. <laughs> Don't do that, please. Oh, God. Um, all right. Let's have a look. Okay. Now, we do have a little topic today. Now, what we're going to talk about is a little bit... Um, don't misconstrue this as having a dig at anybody. Um, uh, it's, it's an interesting concept. It's an interesting thought because one side of the argument is... Uh, you know, cigar box guitars, you know, why do people sell, you know, do all of this work, um, buckle loads of work on something and then uh, on a cigar box guitar or an instrument and then sell it for like next to nothing, right? So we're going to go all the way to the other end of the argument and talk about, and not argument so much, but all, the other end of the, of the topic and talk about why some CBGs are worth very large sums of money. Yeah. I mean, I can answer that without a second thought. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to, I thought what we might do is look at look at a couple of a couple of brands, uh, yep. a couple of brands that are out there. Um, this by no means. Now I'm going to have a caveat here. I haven't played any of these instruments um, except for uh, a Daddy Mojo. Um, so obviously, I'll be talking about Daddy Mojo. Um, uh, <laughs> I've got one of their limited edition Daddy Mojo um, uh, Piezo powered uh, art cigar box guitars, the four strings that came out with the etching. They did the burnt etchings on it. I've got the one with the flower print, and they did one with a dog on it and a horse and a. You know, they were, li they were limited edition runs. So I've actually got one of those, which is which is gorgeous. So I can talk about that guitar. Um, and having said that, that's not a particularly expensive guitar. What? All right. So I suppose what what's a <laughs> see the what is a reasonable price for a cigar box guitar? That's a you know that's that's a I suppose a blunt question. It's is it well, as, as much as it, as much as it's sold for? Sorry. As much as it's sold for. That's true. All right. As much as it's sold for. So, look, if you can uh, uh, look at these instruments in several different ways. Yeah. You know, the person who's making them and what they're doing it for. Yeah. Um, so, that's, that, those two things are important. Some people give their guitars away because yeah. that's what they like doing. Yeah. And I'm sure there's some people out there who make some amazing instruments who give them away but yeah. don't realize they're giving away amazing instruments. But if you're a musician... If someone hands you a guitar that cannot be cheated because it was ten dollars worth of parts that you found, I'm not going to issue saying that because I still make those sort of guitars, yeah. so to speak. But if you if you wanted to play like in a band in tune with every other guitar, then it has to be made correctly. Yeah. And I think a cigar box is no different. If it's made to do that, then it should you know the price should reflect it. The amount of work that's gone into it. Yeah. 
Um, that's that's you know, that's my five first words because I think it's more than two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so but but okay. So then, so it's got to stay in tune. It's got to intonate well up the neck. Yes, that's it's got to be able to take whatever or whatever hand's got to be able to take the pickup and send it. So it can't be cheap. Yes. Yeah. Which, um, I'm not saying yeah. the cheap pickups don't work. They are, they do work, and you can make an ex- exceptional instrument of cheap parts. I'm not saying it has to be expensive, but then you can look at the work that goes into it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, for example, look when I looked at when I looked at Michael's guitars when they came in, the very first thing I thought as soon as I saw them was they're they're certainly and most definitely, and I'm not putting myself down by any means, but in saying this, I'm not putting my building you know, if you want to say prowess or my building yep. ability down. But when I looked at them and I, I, I just, I just was, they are, they're immaculate. They're beautifully, beautifully made instruments. Even, even from a furniture point of view, if you want to say that, like just the way the necks have been built and laminated together. I mean, he's a, he's a, uh, he's a joiner by trade. So he yeah, he's an art, but he's taken his, that trade and made it an art. Yeah. Right. But, so his guitar should be worth money. That's right. But at the same time, you know, I've seen guitars that have been built by a similar type of builder, but who doesn't have the knack or understanding of how a guitar should be set up. Yeah. So they're not necessarily, if you want to use the term luthier, as for cigar box guitar building, uh, and that's the only thing I could probably say. Luthier knows how to set up a guitar. About they know about fret placement, they know about bridge and nut placement, saddle placement, sure, sure. all of that. So that side of things, if you even without full training and and, and having gone just you know gone. Well, most most luthiers aren't trained anyway. No, <laughs> they do it themselves because they're into t- you know woodworking. Yeah. I, I, I'm in I'm a woodworker. I started off as carpenter and this is where I am. I know how to use tools. It helps. Yeah. <laughs> But it also gives me a value. Yes. You know? Yeah, it certainly does. Because I know about how much work goes into it, and I'm sure you know, people like Michael do, uh, might both, you know, understand that as well. Well, there's another Michael, actually, if you want to talk about it. There's, there's uh, up at um, your Monday Markets. There's a oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a Michael. Up there. I think his name's Michael. Michael up at, at your Monday Markets, who... I who introduced me actually to he's the he's the guy who introduced me to cigar box guitars. Um, I remember being really? up there. I, this I've kind of told the story back in the early early episodes of how I discovered cigar box guitars. But when I went up there, it was you know Michael's guitars. They're not all right. I, when I say this, I say that, this again with a caveat. The last time I went up there, I was probably and saw his guitars up there was probably 2014. So I don't know what's happened in between that time. But when I went up, they were still too pricey for me. I couldn't afford them. But one of the reasons for that, A, he makes lovely guitars. He really, really does. They're, they're beautiful. They're solid. They're, 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 they sound great. Absolutely fantastic. But his rent, where he's doing that at Yamundi, at Yamundi Markets, the rent yeah. there is something like $200 a day. Serious? It's insanely expensive, apparently. From what I've heard, the rent there is insanely expensive. So you've got to look. I think there's also a situation where you have to look at overheads for where you're selling from. Yeah, sure. Yeah, a lot of cigar box guitar builders are selling, you know, are selling from home. They're selling on the internet. They're going to a market and paying like I used to do, twenty five dollars a day to go to a market and. Uh, and and sell from the market, and you know, and you pay your twenty five dollars. But then again, on the other hand, like I'm where I am coming from, you know, I've got a shop. Like it's costing me a certain. That's amount really of money. lucky. <laughs> well, that's it. Like it's costing me a certain amount of money per per week and per month to actually be able to have have this store to actually sell the guitars from. So part of my costing comes into actually being able to keep the doors open. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you got a brick, you got a brick and mortar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, rent, market space, even even you know for for people who uh, maybe they're going to a co-op. You know, so you might go to a co-op to build your cigar box guitars, and you've got a you've got a particular dollar value, you know, connected to it to, to having to be at this co-op. So that would mean that you or you know men's shed. Sometimes you might have to pay a certain amount of money to be in a men's shed to use equipment. So you've got to kind of have a think about what's happening with, you know, with being able to afford that. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it's it all it, it, it accumulates, doesn't it, really, if you think about it. Yeah. 
Um, and then you've got name, as you were saying, name. Now, Benedetto, do you remember that? Is it Benedetto that I'm thinking of? Um, I think so. He's the gentleman who builds the cigar box guitars and, like, Stephen Tyler from Aerosmith is, is seen. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what's Look, you see, he, he can almost <laughs> get away with you no know, charging with him because he, he does have a foot in. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, he... But his guitars look amazing, so that's... Well, so we're getting oh, yeah. the recording. Sorry, I hope we didn't didn't lose too much. Then a little sign came up and it stopped recording. So we are having some, we are having some technical issues. So I apologise if if the sound recording today is not great. Um, I'm at about five seconds away from throwing this computer through a wall. So <laughs> I've just make a guitar out of it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, so this guy, this guy builds. Like, I've tried to uh, get in contact with him. I've had a couple of words with him back and forth, like nice, nice chats about actually having him on the show one day, and I do hope to. Um, he, he's obviously his, his guitars. He also built. He was building guitars for I think Benji Madden from uh, from not uh, what was it Green Day. Uh, he actually he actually had a signature guitar going with him for a while. All that sort of stuff. So there's that side of things. There's the fame factor, I suppose, isn't there? Well, that's you, you want the right person to pick your guitar up. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> and, true. Yeah. So there is a connection there. Dave Grohl, of course, like you know, from from Foo Fighters and you know Nirvana. But he's he's also you know he's also there's a connection there or something as well. Um, so the other thing, the other thing was not just who you are, I suppose, but the other thought might be as to where you're actually selling. Now, I've seen some guitars, like even here in Australia on eBay, where they're fully fretted, they're, you know, and people are selling these guitars for, you know, for $160 on eBay. My goodness, the time. Well, the time, (laughs) the effort. You're paying to put it on eBay. And 10%. Yeah, there's ten percent, and not only that, but you don't. It's not just ten percent that eBay kill you for. And I'm not knocking eBay because I use eBay, and at the end of the day, if I choose to use it, I can't get angry with them because you know I'm not. But the simple fact of the matter is that when when I sell a four hundred and fifty dollar guitar on eBay, I lose forty five dollars that goes directly to eBay. But on top of that, I also get hit with one. I think it's uh, somewhat like three percent. To PayPal, if it goes through PayPal or one of the providers, so you don't lose ten percent. You lo- you're losing upwards of fifteen percent of that sale. You know, bam, it's gone. So you know you've got to factor in if, if you're serious about what you're building and you want to continue building for a long period of time. You've got to consider that. Well, if you want to sell them for that price, yeah. you do. Reverb, admittedly, is better. Um, their prices are better, but you don't get nearly as many sales f- through Reverb as you do through eBay. Um, no. you know, we've discussed that before in a previous podcast. A um, couple of builders who do sell through Reverb, for example, one is Red Dog. So Red Dog Guitars, uh, he's based in the US. Uh, yep. I know he was in, what was it, Puerto Rico for a while, and then he moved to, I think, back to the mainland of the US. And he's he's kind of got, he's got a, a really interesting reputation. Um, I've actually spoken to uh, somebody who actually has one of his guitars. I've never touched one. Um, he does very interesting videos on on YouTube. Um, his guitars are in excess of twelve or fifteen hundred dollars a pop, and that yep. that seems to be. I think I've even seen them upwards of two thousand two hundred for a resonator. Now he's a guy who's basically gone. He builds his own. He builds pretty much. He builds almost everything himself. Like he does build his yeah. own pickups. He, he, I think he even, he was doing his own machine heads for a little while through someone or doing something with that. His guitars are very distinctive. Um, they are, you know, they're obviously worth a lot of money. People are buying them. People out there are buying these guitars. And, you know, he's put a dollar figure on it saying, this is what I or my instruments are worth, and I'm going to say it. I, I think that's highly commendable. I really, really do. Uh, the guy who and I cannot remember who I was talking to. You think that I would, but I can't. Um, I cannot remember for the life of me, and I do apologise for that. Um, not that I would say the name anyone on, on an open forum like this. But, <laughs> um, he loved it. He loved it. Yeah. 
you know, he absolutely he absolutely loved it. And if that's that's worth every cent. If you sit there and you're playing that guitar and you absolutely love it, then that's fantastic. You know, I, I remember going and buying, uh, I think when I was 30, which is about 320 years ago, uh, <laughs> I, I bought, for my birthday, I bought two guitars. I bought a 12-string 12 12 Yamaha, which I loved, uh, which I actually butchered for the parts for my very first homemade electric guitar and <laughs> cigar box guitar or biscuit tin guitar, and I've never rebuilt it since, which is terrible. Oh, really? It's still sitting under the house. You know, in pieces. Um, and I bought a Flying V, uh, an LTD Flying V. And, uh, you know, I bought it. It was worth $1,200. And I hated it. I hated it. I could never get a good sound out of it, you know. Whereas, yeah. you know, my wife spent a small fortune, you know, when you know for our first wedding anniversary. And she bought me a Les Paul, you know. <coughs> yeah, I know. She's pretty cool. And, yeah. <laughs> And, um, yeah, yeah, just put in the box for world's best wife. You know, it's like, oh, my God. Um, she got that. And that is, that is, the, that is the guitar that I, that I judge every other guitar by. It's, totally, it's just – and that, you know, that, that at the time, that was not a cheap instrument at all. Like, that was – that was, you know, and that's definitely worth it. Whereas the other one was worth, you know, half or, you know, a third as much. And it was just – it was, excuse my French, a piece of shit. So it just, it, just, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. it just didn't have anything going for it. It really, really didn't, you know. So uh, there is that that, that quality factor, um, you know, in it. Um, another big builder is, you know, obviously Rob Robel, we, who who I've spoken to a couple of um, a couple of months ago. Rob's guitars yeah. aren't cheap, but but by in all honesty, the people that uh, one of my customers here here in Australia uh, for people overseas, uh, one of my customers here has actually got one of Rob's guitars. And he's just told me straight up. He said it was worth absolutely every cent. Now they're yeah, I'm not surprised. I've seen them before. They're amazing. Yeah, well, they're six hundred dollars US. It was six fifty US or something like that, aren't they? Or something, something around there, I'm sure. Which, when you convert that to Australian and include shipping, that's um, it carry the one uh, bloody hell of a lot of money. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. But, worth. but you know, worth it. It's you know, it's a, it's. Um, Whereas I'm going to say this, uh, you know, obviously, you know, we love it. We love Justin Johnson. He's, um, you know, we've had him on the podcast earlier, guys. But if you haven't heard the interview, go back and check it out. Uh, Justin's claim to fame for a little while now has been the shuffle guitar. Yes, which he's got. He seems to have a warehouse full of them. He's he's been building them. He sits there building them up and doing all sorts of things with them. Um, I started building them here in Australia about probably about two years ago because one of my one of my customers called me and said, Adam, he said, have you seen those shovel guitars? I said, yeah, they look great. He said, can you make me one? I said, yeah. I said, but you know, Justin Johnson makes them. So look, I'm, I'm quite happy to pass people on if you know, that kind of thing because I wasn't building them. He said, yeah, he said, he said, the problem is, he said, I really love it, but by the time I get it to Australia, it's going to cost me $750. Ouch. Yeah. So, you know, and, which, so when we did the math, um, it just, it made a lot of sense for me to actually, for me to actually build them. So yeah, but you've made a few now, have you? We've made, yeah, we've made quite a few, but I haven't made one in about six months. I've actually done a video, I actually did a video saying, okay, we're going to start, this is, this is, uh, progressing through the build and I've still got two shovel guitars downstairs at the moment. I just can't get to them. I'm just, I'm so stupidly flat out at the moment. I literally cannot get to, get to them. But they're they're great fun. They're horrible things to play. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, they're awful. They're bloody horrible. But I tell you what, they sound immense, and they they're look... not comfortable, are they? Oh, they are not comfortable to play. No, they're awful to play. They're horrible to play. And I and this is me having gone through a couple of different shovels to try to get the lowest action I possibly can. And guys, I'm saying this. I'm building them. I sell them, and I can tell you, they be prepared for really for. Because the neck of them is so <laughs> it's going to be a learning curve. It's yeah, it, it's yeah, it's um, it's it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. So um, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, you've got to really want to play them, you know. And and I and I've uh, funnily enough, I've actually found that the the shovel that's actually the best for it is the cheapest bunning shovel you can possibly buy because it's got the it's got the lowest kick up 
You know what I mean? Like it's it's yeah, the yeah, flattest of all the show because you got to try and get the flattest one you can. Anyway, that's that's the thing. And I suppose the last one, last one I'll probably talk about again is like Daddy Mojo. So you know, I'm a big fan of Daddy Mojo. I'm not having a go. And remember, guys, Mark and I aren't having a go at any of these builders at all. We're no, just, no, we're just no, looking at reasons to why some of these guitars are you know are worth so much money. Um, not cost so much, but worth so much money. Um, well, people's time, you know, it's the other thing, people's time. Sorry? It also comes down to their time. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Danny Mojo guitars are all made out of a co-op in Montreal. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a co-op. Oh, I, thought it was, I didn't actually realise it was more than one person. No, no, there's, <laughs> there's uh, I think, a couple of people, a couple of people with Danny Mojo. There's Lenny, um, I think, Piroth Roberts, and... Luca Tripoldi, if I've said their names wrong, I apologise. I'm doing this from memory. Um, both of those guys, well, basically, uh, Daddy Mojo got its got its big big um, kick off basically from Playboy magazine. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, there was a write up. There was a writer for Playboy that contacted them. He'd been selling guitars for a little while, and it's actually thanks to our mate Chicken Bone John over in the UK that Daddy yeah. Mojo got started because. Chicken Bone John refused to send him a guitar to Canada. He wouldn't send anything outside of the UK. So he said, start really? build my own. So he started building them and then putting them up on, what are you doing? I'm standing. Oh, you stop it. It's coming through. <laughs> and then, and uh, they got, he, he basically, he was selling them on eBay and he got contacted by a writer for Playboy who said, look, can I come and do a write-up on you? They look really interesting. And apparently, yeah, he did the write-up and everything like that. And a few months later, out comes the magazine, and overnight he has an order for 100 guitars. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so he got a mate if he's involved, and that's basically where where um, where the company kind of started. And, um, that's fascinating. Guys, well, they've got guitars ranging from US, I think US 450, uh, upwards yep. to about $2,000 for oh, a okay. uh, full resonator, six-string six string cigar box guitar, resonator, like pickups and and now they're doing electric guitars as well and it seems to be that's what a lot of people do. Yeah, have you heard of uh, Drummond and Hammond? I think that's what Hammond. Drummond. Yes, they're a UK mob, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they make some really nice guitars too. Yeah. I think they're pretty. Reverb. They're certainly not pocket money. No, I think you can find them on Reverb or is it Etsy? Etsy, Etsy, Etsy. is what they do. Yeah, I don't, I've never really gotten on with Etsy to be honest with you. I never really <laughs> have done too much with that. So look. For, for all you builders out there who are building guitars and, you know, whether you, if, how, whatever you're selling your guitars for, if you're giving them away and you just love doing it, that's, God bless you, that's, that's a wonderful thing. If, if you think you're mid, middle of the road price-wise price up to, you know, however much, you know, all we're saying is justify your price based on... What, what you, you think about yourself. Huh? And what you feel about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if, you know, price. I think because when I started, I was selling I was selling cigar box guitars, fretless cigar box guitars for $150 at the market. Yep. Right? And I was comfortable there. And I would have local cigar box guitar builders coming up to me saying, look, you're kind of undercutting everybody here and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you're doing it, you know, you got to raise your prices. And I said, look, you know what? I'm really comfortable selling my guitars at that price. So I get why. And they were fretless, keep in mind. Um... I'm now selling my fretless cigar box guitars with pizos for 229 up to 249 depending on how hard it is to find the boxes. I'm still comfortable selling them at that price. To me, that they're a nice entry-level price. It's comfortable. Mum and Dad can buy one for their kids or for grandparents or for gifts. To me, it's a, it's a price point, you know, and it's something that's really groovy, and they still sound great in my opinion. Uh, yeah. My the top of the range cigar box guitars are starting to hit upwards of the, the high 400s up uh, and soon will be going up to 499 so i'm talking to well yeah i'm talking with a couple of couple of shops down here in sydney about the possibility of maybe maybe having having some in some stores down here so but that's all you know and that's something i'm quite happy to talk about if anyone's had any questions or anything like that i'm always i'm i'm quite open i'm a very open person um <laughs> You know, but to do that legitimately, you've got to be selling them for around about five hundred. But a lot of work goes into them; they take a long time to build. So you know, okay. um, so that's happening there. Having said that, I also build electric guitars, and I'm selling my electric guitars anywhere between you know seven hundred ninety nine dollars upwards to fifteen hundred dollars, and we're selling those as well. So there's 
there's, you know, and it all depend on what I need to do. If I'm building the next, they're going to be higher in price. If I'm not building the next and using aftermarket source next, they're less expensive, you know, simply because it's just less work involved. Um, yeah. You know, and there's that side of things as well. Um, for those people who are looking and they're building and they want to get go to that next step, look at some of these people, some of these people like Red Dog, look at Daddy Mojo, look at your Rob Robles, look at these guys, you know, uh, Benedict. I'm, I know I'm Benedetti or Benedetto. I cannot remember his name. It's a terrible thing. I'm a horrible person. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it, even, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull you into this, Mark, because I'm looking at some of the most amazing guitars that you're building, some of these absolutely stunning instruments that you're building, and I'm sitting there going, Mark, you need to raise your prices. <laughs> oh, you don't know what I sell my guitars for, do you? No, I've seen a couple. So <laughs> you just, you know, they are, they are absolute. They're beautiful. Well, for the prices from before, and even Nigel McTrustery, Nigel does the most amazing. Oh, job. Yeah. And I thought, always thought that Nigel's guitars, I think, were were really well priced, considering what he does and how how he goes about building them, what he has to source for them with the with the with the keys and with all of that. Like this, they're absolutely gorgeous, you know. And that's yeah, that's. Yeah. And, and and I put Nigel in with with that. I'd, I'd love to see Nigel do some do some fretted stuff, you know, as well. That'd be really groovy. Um, well, I think he's doing more now with his live stuff. I think he's kind of yeah. focusing more on his music now than the actual building side of things, isn't he? Um, yeah. But but there's that. That's it. Anyway, so uh, have you got anything else that you wanted to uh, comment on in regards to that topic? No, no, no. I just think you know, go with what your gut tells you that you're worth, and that's the price you should stay stick with. You know? And if it. you don't don't sell it straight away, then there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> there may be, there may be, but they, look into all the different reasons. Look into how you're selling them, how you're yep. promoting them, you know, through social media or through any of those things, or you know, online or whatever. Check that, yep. check that out. Stick to your guns, guys and girls. Great. Guys and girls, stick to your guns. Um, build of the week. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was terrible. I apologise for that. Um, the build of the week actually comes from. <laughs> it's been three weeks ago, and I knew which website I took this, which Facebook group I actually took this off. Um, it might be um, Fretless Cigar Box Guitar Builders. Uh, it may have been taken from that from that group, um, and it's by Tim Henderson. It's a Fretless CBG by Tim Henderson. Um, it was absolutely gorgeous. We've got some gorgeous photos here. I'll try and put these photos actually up on, uh, maybe on the on the group image uh, or up on the up at the group. Oh, actually, did we get this from the group, our own group? Oh, maybe. I think it might have actually been from our group. Um, gorgeous. Couple of things I wanted to point out on it. He seems to have. It is fretted actually, um, and he's got. It's a diatonic fretting. Uh, it doesn't look like that, does it? It does look like it. Because it seems to be frets missing. <laughs> so he's got, he's got, I think, diatonic fretting. Um, and the thing that's interesting about this, he has the volume and the tone controls on the rear of the guitar. And I remember building a couple, actually building a couple like that on the either side of the uh, the through neck. And it actually wasn't all too all too uncomfortable to actually play. You basically just had them sitting under where the uh, the guitar strap hooked on. Yeah. Um, it makes me wonder how it looks inside, like the frame, how he's framed it, because it's obviously not a through neck. Yeah. And it's interesting because he's got the timber bridge on it. Oh, I see. Uh, he's, it's, it's, oh, it goes through the body. He's got three holes going through the body. body. Yeah. So I'm wondering... I can't tell if there's any string ferrules there or just holes. I'd say they'd be ferrules. Um, for rules. For rules. The other thing is, if we have a look at the image, does it look like the centre of the image, uh, the centre of the, the the box is actually recessed? That's quite an interesting thing. Oh, that can is. Can you see that? I can see that. And it's in a circle. So it, it does, it looks, ooh, clever me. <laughs> and the other thing is he's taken that circle forward onto the headstock. There's a hole up at the headstock with a little devil horn. Oh, little devil horn. That's button. amazing you picked that up. I only just saw that. That's amazing. Well, thank you very much. I'm a very... Oh, no, thank you, Tim Henderson. That's a nice build. Isn't that an absolutely <laughs> gorgeous build? So kudos to Tim Henderson for building an absolutely stunning uh, Oh, I'd like to find it again because I want to see that bigger picture. Yeah, I think there are some more, and there's actually some more... Uh, some more images. I'm just, I'm curious. They look, I wonder if they're toothpicks. Yeah, I can't 
can't see that much of it. Because they, they're really white. Yeah. And the, that's really interesting. I'm just I'm wondering what he's used as frets there in the, in, in the picture. But big big kudos to Tim Henderson. Guys, we will be trying to, if you're posting image your images on the group, uh, Mark and I will be pulling some pictures out at random and, and have, well, not at random, but images that look pretty darn cool. And that one looked pretty damn cool to me. I thought that, that looked great. Um, yeah. Tim Henderson, I think he's Aussie. Is he? I think he might be Aussie. Tim Henderson, bearded fellow with a hat. He yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it, from memory, he's, he's got the kind of the Cobra looking hat with a, and a beard. He's kind of I don't think he's Australian, though. He may not be. We're not going to hold that against him. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, that, that's probably better for him. <laughs> we, we could. <laughs> but we won't. All right, tool of the week, Mark. What's your tool of the week? Oh, my goodness. My hands. Your hands. <laughs> okay. No, I, I shouldn't say that. A saw. <laughs> my fret saw. I love my fret saw. You love your fret saw. Okay. I what, do what love kind of fret saw. saw have you got? I've just got, I have a Pax guitar uh, saw. What do so, you have? A Pax. P A X. Pax. Yes, Pax. Pax. I think it's a uh, British company. Oh, okay. I've got I one think? of those. I think I bought mine from Stu Mac. And it may have been. I think it's. it's it's like a British name, Shergold, Sherwood. Sheffield? Sheffield, that might be it. I think that's the steel, man. It's the Sheffield steel. I think it's actually Pax. It might be. <laughs> and it's got a guard uh, on it so you don't go too far down? Yeah, yeah, well, it has that option. Yeah, you don't yeah. Have, I don't use that because I use a, um, uh, what do you call it, a fretting jig. Oh, you wuss. <laughs> no, I've, I've done enough by hand to know that it's not worth my time. <laughs> Or you do what I do and order my fretboards from Mark Wilmot at M R W S. That's already cut. Yeah, I don't do all of mine. No, because I, I do I do a lot of my um, my my other guitars. I use actually. Um, I, I <laughs> you, you're going to look at me and shake your head because I actually use um, when I go through Bunnings, my local timber store. Um, I go through and I actually use Maranti, Maranti edging, and I test oh, yeah. it, and I test it with my thumbnail because every now and again you get Maranti and you can put your thumb through it. Right, it's really soft. Other times you do it, and it's really, really quite rock hard. And I actually use those for my um, for some of the other guitars that I do. The Lightning Boys all get the rosewood the rosewood fretboards now um, yep. from uh, from you. And yep. um, and I'm actually going to have to hit you up for some. Um, might have to hit you up for some um, for some more fretboards for some electric guitar fretboards. Um, and Phil, oh, yes. actually, Phil, uh, who I from Twangbow Guitars up in Caloundra. Um, yep. Phil's actually. Uh, I'm going to be getting some. Hopefully, I'll be able to get some. Um, a little bit of fretboard material off him. Uh, cause he's, oh, yeah. he's doing a little bit, but um, I will hit you up for some blackwood. That's for sure. I'm going to find some. Yeah, you have to find some. That's all right. Um, my tool of the week is my Japanese rasp file. I've been cool. finding I use that for so much. I use that to open up um, uh, box holes for the through necks. Um, I because I generally prefer to cut the cut the. Um, to cut them smaller than I need, that way, if, uh, you know, they don't end up too big. Um, so I tend to use those, use my Japanese brass file for that. Also for shaping necks when I'm building electrics, uh, and also for doing the neck heels and things like that when I'm doing my three piece necks. Um, yeah. I use I use that a lot. That's that probably gets that gets a bucket load of actually work. Uh, so that's that's my tool of the week. So if you don't have yourself a uh, a Pax fret saw or a uh, Japanese rasp uh, rasp file. Go and check them out because I tell you what, they are very, very, very cool items to have in your workshop. Uh, yeah. What's your top tip this week? Oh my goodness! Try and look at everything as a guitar part. <laughs> That's what I did. Yeah. 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 Explain. Explain. Oh look, there's a chair. I could make that into a guitar. Oh. No, something. Just try something you every build. <laughs> There's grandma's dentures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> um, all right, well, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought about that. It's, it's, I think because I get I I get so caught up in doing. Uh, I'm now in a process because I'm building so much. I'm getting in a process now, and it's it's almost becoming factory ish. Whereas I've, I've yeah, look, been... you've got, when you've got models, it's a different story. Like you're in a different predicament. Yeah, if that's the right word. Predicament yes. didn't mean to sound negative, do you? Know what I mean? No, it is. Yeah. It's, it is in a way, and I think my outlet lately has been the electric guitars that I've been building because I've been building yeah, um, yeah. these crazy electric guitars out of plywood, and um, 
they've just been brilliant. They've been flying out, to be honest with you. They've been really, really fun, uh, fun to build. Uh, and I've been doing some four-string as well. Um, we did a four-string earlier in the week. That that flew out. That was that was great. I put a picture up of that. Um, that, for me, has kind of been a little bit of a, an outlet for, for me, um, just to kind of clear my head. For, because I'm building so many cigar box guitars, um, I do need to clear my head a little bit from that, and that allows me to do that without stepping away too far. Um, yeah. That's, that's a nice tip. I like that, because that, that can bring me back a little bit. You know what I mean? It's, it's it bring the fun factor back into it a touch. Um, yeah. So that would be easy. Um, my top tip this week is it's winter, guys and gals, here in the Southern Hemisphere, whether in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, um, wherever you are, where it is cold. Do not wear a scarf when working with uh, with a, uh, a router. Or any power tools, actually. Or any power tools <laughs> at all. It's it's so tempting to have even long sleeve shirts. If you've got a long sleeve shirt on, make sure your buttons are done up or roll them up to the wrists if you need. Oh, to. you got a long beard like me. Uh, yes, yeah. If you've got a long beard, don't put your face too close to the uh, orbital sander. Um, <laughs> you know, it's uh, yeah. It's the last thing you want to do is is, is get that get, put your face that close to a um, to an oscillating spindle. Yes, as well. you need to debark your face. That's exactly it. So just take care when you're in the shop, guys. That's my top tip this week. Only because it was I had a scarf on, and I went to I was actually going to the table router and it was only that I kind of looked down and it and there it was that I kind of went oh let's take that off let's you know let's let's so safety first guys and obviously making sure that you're I've had a little bit of a scare this week with asthma and my and my lungs um so what? yeah well nothing nothing dramatic but the the doctors just said look you you, you kind of I'm on a preventative now um I've had some had a couple little mild very mild health issues but the doctor said look you know what you're working with dust you're working with wood dust i'm not set up with dust extraction and stuff like that so just do you wear a mask i do wear i i, I need to wear it more than i do but i'm now wearing it all the time so yep. uh i need to get a mask that's a little easy to use because i've got glasses and it's i find it very i want something that's going to go on very quickly and easily that's uh, yeah. that's more professional than just a simple cardboard thing over your face. I want to, I, I want to get one of those ones that looks like a biker mask. You know what I mean? The oh, yeah, 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 the other one, yeah. So I want to try and do that. Um, I think that's full Mad Max. Yeah, that kind of thing, yeah. So hopefully, um, hopefully we'll, uh, yeah, it's, it's, just take care of yourselves, guys and girls, because, you know, your lungs, uh, Rob Robel had, um, uh, nasty scared us recently. Um, he actually he always wears face face protection when he's working with dust and things, but the doctor actually thinks because he got a strange fungal infection in his lungs, um, and he thinks because he was using old wood, it's not like new wood. You don't have to worry as much about this sort of stuff, but because it was old wood that he was using, especially stuff that's got funguses through it and all that sort of, what do they call it? Um, the burl or whatever it is. What's the, what's the um, a burl? Not burl, the, the fungus, it's a... Uh... Oh, with, uh, when you get... Ah, what's it called? Something this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that. Um, so, yeah, so he had the, he had some big issues with... Um, big Spalted. Issues. Spalted, yes. So what actually happened was he, he took his mask off and then shook his clothes free. And that was actually when he th the doctor thinks he, he was actually breathing in the dust fumes. So just... Uh, take care of yourselves, especially if you if if like Rob Robel, you you, you use um, older timbers, um, old timber and things like that that might have some sorts of you know microbes and bacterial things in it. It's the same, I suppose, as if you're gardening and you're, you're using you know manure and stuff like that. They always say wear face wear breathing protection and all that sort of stuff. So smoke like, cigars before you use them to make guitars. Well, that's it, you know. It's probably safer smoking cigars than it is breathing in wood dust, but who knows. Because so, <laughs> you don't inhale. <laughs> I tried it, but I didn't inhale. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. Um, obviously, guys, this is a safety tip. Please don't smoke. <laughs> Unless yeah, you do, then it's none of my business. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's, that's, that's it. Yeah. That's the end of our show. Awesome. We will endeavour to be back next week for you with more hilarity and more vulgarity and more, you know. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, Mark, you've enjoyed it? 
I have. Thank you, Adam, as always. Thank you very much, Mark, as always. And I'm hoping that this recording, this is the first time I've actually used this, so I'm actually, fingers crossed that this recording is actually going to work. Yes, that would be good. Yes, but I'm sure we'll find it. If not, it's been a lovely conversation. Yeah, <laughs> as always. <laughs> All right, mate, I'll let you go. Have a good no one. Always, mate. We'll speak soon. Will do. All right, thank you. Bye. Um, and thank you for listening to the Cigar Box Guitar Builder podcast. It's been a pleasure. Uh, this is either episode 58 or 57. I can't tell which one it is now. It is currently the 7th of July, and um, I'm signing off. Catch you later. Bye. <laughs>